Well, hi, uh, I'm Gary Dushnitsky, Associate Professor at London uh, Business School, and a lot of what I do uh, spends the intersection of uh, strategy, entrepreneurship, and finance. And when you actually look at the questions that I'm addressing, they are strongly informed by theory, but fundamentally driven by puzzles that I see in the world um, around me. Uh, if I dive into uh, one specific uh, topic, uh, the research on the corporate venture capital, uh, at least in one paper, what really um, interested me was a result of conversation with uh, people, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists and corporate venture capitalists. Specifically, uh, when I first approached the topic of venture capital investment uh, and corporations that uh, play a role in that uh, domain, it seems to be in the uprise. Uh, Intel Capital is a dominant player, Google Ventures is uh, highly spoken about right now. But you see that in almost um, uh, those practices in almost uh, every industry. General Motors has its venturing fund, Citigroup has a venture unit, uh, as well as Disney. Uh, they, they have Steamboat Venture as a venture vehicle. My initial thoughts were that uh, such uh, investment by a corporate investor would greatly benefit both the corporation as well as the startup firms. When I started digging carefully into that, a much more interesting dynamic unfolded. Um, and as I was trying to make sense of it, uh, I've uh, used a theoretical framework, one of information economics, in order to actually find out a counterintuitive pattern. Specifically, many large corporations set up corporate venturing unit in order to learn from innovative uh, startups. Many innovative startups explicitly run away from those corporate investors. And that's where I took a theoretical prism in order to understand this dynamic, understand when do the two come together, when do they not, and what are then the practical implications both for the large company that invests in startups as well as for the entrepreneurial ventures themselves. The fundamental dynamic that I unravel is the following. For a large corporation to um, go ahead and invest in a startup, it needs to be the case that they know enough about what is it that the startup is doing, the technology that they have developed, and so on. The disclosure that the startup needs to undertake in order to win that corporate interaction um, can sometimes be quite detrimental. If all you have is that intellectual property and you just surrendered it to your largest potential competitor, that can be quite unnerving and in fact, oftentimes, startups will say, hold on, let me wait, let me not approach uh, large corporations for, um, uh, for those considerations. What I have tried to do is systematically uh, get a patterns of, a data about patterns of um, coming together between large corporations and uh, the startups. It is very difficult to be the fly on the wall and see how much information was disclosed in any situation. However, this is where theory can uh, come to your help um, and actually deduce some patterns that you might expect. Specifically, if the startup is targeting the same industry as that of the corporate, such that the startup success might render the corporate products obsolete, there are significant concerns about um, IP, intellectual property, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, if the startup targets a area that is complementary to that of the corporation, a software a, a seeking startup seeking investment by a hardware a company, then the two are complementary and there are less uh, concerns. The data that have accumulated is basically data on over 7,000 startups that operated in the US in the 90s and beyond and looking at who is it that invested them as well as whether or not the pair are substitutes or complements. Of all the potential relationship that could have uh, formed, only a handful have actually materialized. What I do is I create, uh, if you wish, a big matrix uh, looking at whether or not a potential um, relationship and investment uh, actually materialized or not. And the independent variable basically looks at whether the two are potential complements or substitutes. In a nutshell, the results uh, are consistent with my prediction. When the two are potential substitutes, the likelihood of them coming together is much lower. On the other hand, when the two are complements, the likelihood is much higher. There is one additional um, um, test, if you wish, or a contingency that I look at. A lot of the story is uh, based or pivots on the theoretical understanding of the role of intellectual property. 
Accordingly, what I find is that the dynamic that I just described are most salient in industries that are characterized by weak intellectual property protection. In those industries that are characterized by strong IP protections, where those uh, dynamics and potential concerns are uh, irrelevant, those patterns are, are much more muted, further giving support to the fundamental theoretical argument. So the implication, that's an excellent question, and the implications are twofold. Um, from a startup perspective, we oftentimes tend to look at investors who are companies operating in the industry that we are targeting. However, some of the findings that the IA find suggest that if you operate in an industry where intellectual property regime is weak, what you want to do is not necessarily look at investors that operate in the same industry that you do, but rather uh, investors that operate in industries that are complementary to the one that you are doing. So if you are doing uh, big data analytics, maybe don't look at other big data analytics companies, but at companies in verticals or sectors that benefit from big data analytics. That is um, um, one implication for the startup firms. For the large corporations, what it does is it actually uh, puts a more nuanced understanding on what role can the corporate venture capital strategy uh, take uh, and to what extent it should be used to grow an ecosystem of complementary uh, startups with their innovative uh, offering versus provide a early warning system or radar into the changes that are happening within their focal um, industry. And so kind of having a more nuanced understanding on what role can the corporate venturing program uh, effectively provide uh, within the broader innovation strategy.